Okay, let's uh, let's do this. Troy Baker, as as a lot of people know, is a famous voice actor. Done roles for video games. A lot of his well-known roles are the Joker, Joel from The Last of Us, and many more. But the one I feel is his most underrated one is this. Booker DeWitt is a man who sold his daughter due to gambling debt, due to the depression of his wife dying, and he served in the Pinkertons, which is known as to use guns. This is his downfall. Our story begins with Booker DeWitt getting transported by the Lutesses to the lighthouse. Because Booker has been tasked in order, in order to save himself from debt. Bring us the go and wipe away the debt. He has to go to a place called Columbia, but he's going to get transported to, well, like a lighthouse. But because of, of this, we also get to learn more about him. He was a part of the Pinkertons, and also, since he is, has experience with that, he is able to do this. And this is basically his last chance in order to get cash so he can pay away his debt. We also learn that basically he doesn't value religion, which is a common theme in this game. He, he's a little bit skeptical at first, but then sits on the chair that they have at the top of the, of the lighthouse. It chains him up and basically it starts to form into a machine. This thing turns out to be a rocket and then it launches Booker into the sky. Booker is scared at first and basically he's got fear. But as, as, as he gets higher above the clouds, the, the sunshine appears and basically then we get to see the, this, ver this game's version of Rapture, Columbia. A city in the sky that Booker is surprised by since it has not been well known by the people below in New York. His goal is simple and he must fulfill it. But, but when he lands, he lands in a place that he does not like. He lands in a church, is basically where that we, when you come to the city, you have came here to wash away your things through baptism. Something that Booker has tried before, a long time ago. So basically, Booker wants to just get out of this place, but the only way to get past the people is to go for a baptism. Booker doesn't want it, but he has to in order to get into the city. During this, the, the priest nearly drowns him after all this, and basically Booker does have a really interesting vision. That's probably foreshadowing. Booker wakes up back in his office in New York, basically having a kind of vision while he was knocked out. He's calling his daughter's name, Anna. We don't know they had a daughter, but basically, this is why he's kind of in debt. But he snaps out of it when he discovers that New York is on fire. He thinks it's just a dream, though. He exits the church and basically lands in Columbia. The city is full of vibrant people, and it looks stunning. People are happy. We also get to learn more about the city as Booker walks around the city, and basically an entire like kind of like demonstration thing passes by. We also get to learn about the leader of the of the entire place, known as Comstock. He saw a vision from an angel, and basically t invited people up to a city in the sky to wash away their sins. This place is very religious. Uh, and values God and worships George Washington than Lincoln. And also, his wife is dead, and basically he's got a daughter who shall take the phone next. But Booker doesn't really care about that and just wants to get to Elizabeth in order to find her. Booker finds out where Elizabeth is, and she's being held at Monument Island. But then as he does this, a little boy gives him a telegram from the roof from the Lattes. This being... DeWitt, stop. Do not alert Comstock to your presence, stop. Whatever you do, do not pick number 77. Stop. Booker attends a brothel and, get, and discovers that this city is not as clean as it seems, as it, is, as it has racism in it. Basically just due to as this was at the times. He accidentally picks the, the ball number 77, and then basically this is what leads him into his violent rage. He gets found out by some cops, and they try to kill him since he's considered to be the false shepherd, prophesied to steal away the lamb known as Elizabeth. They try to kill him, but Booker puts on his, well, violent mode from his Pinkerton days, and kills all of the soldiers. Comstock is aware of this, and basically warns Booker, why did you come here? And basically says that, like, these men will die for me to, in order to stop you. You will not get Elizabeth. And basically, what happens is, is that as Comzog is mentioning this, we learn something about, about Booker. 
Comstock knows who he is and mentions this. This will end in blood. Then again, uh, it always does with you, doesn't it? It always ends in blood. <laughs> After beating a hundred soldiers, Booker makes it to Monument Island and basically finds Elizabeth up in the tower. But as he as he goes there, he, he discovers something about her. She can open up tears into other universes. Kind of like uh, time stuff. And basically, after seeing this, he just wants to get her out of there. And basically, we meet Elizabeth. Uh, uh, hello. <laughs> Booker... Booker tries to calm Elizabeth down after she's surprised by him, and basically he tells her that he's a friend. She doesn't believe him at first, but then she is, she is happy to have someone besides herself and the songbird there, there in the tower with her, as she's finally met someone new in her life. But this meeting is cut short when the songbird is alerted, and basically Elizabeth tries to hide Booker, because basically you can get hurt by the songbird. But Booker reveals to Elizabeth that he has got the key that he got from Lord Tess's. Okay. And that basically he knows how to get out. When Elizabeth sees the key, she she basically des decides this is it. This is how she could get out of this tower. They open up the door and basically escape. But as this happens, the songbird has arrived and basically starts out. wrecking up the place. They run through it and get up this to the way. top of the roof. They are running up. Up and basically, the songbird decides the only way to stop this from happening is to basically, well, destroy the head. Even though they could probably kill Elizabeth. He gets up there and then basically the head is destroyed and they all fall off. But Booker grabs Elizabeth's hand and basically uses the sky hook that he stole from the dead soldiers in order and basically rides down the veil. He rides up there as basically the songbird chases in pursuit. But since the head is falling, it lands and crashes into the bridge, dis disconnecting, disconnecting the, the metal veil from the skyhook, and they fall into the river, escaping from Songbird. <laughs> Elizabeth wakes up Booker after he nearly drowned. She's, she's so happy for his safety that it's actually kind of sweet. But basically, reunitions are kind of short as basically, he doesn't really want help. Elizabeth is also confused that he keeps calling her Anna, which is interesting. He try she tries to help him out, but basically, he's not really into it. But after hearing music, she decides that she's, go she's going to go dance for a while and leave him there to, to rest for a, few for a few minutes. Well, for however long it takes in the game. Booker meets back up with Elizabeth, who's dancing, and tries to get her to come with him to the, to the airship. But she basically wants to stay and have some fun. But he does manage to get her when basically he sees an airship and says that he can take her to Paris, where she's always wanted to go. Not knowing that he's technically lying to her in order to wipe away his debt and get her to New York. But they go anyway. But this is where a thing takes a huge turn. As the man at the counter basically... Basically works for Comstock and Comstock and basically stabs Booker in the hand, and tries to take back Elizabeth. But Booker releases, releases all of his gun ammo on them. But this scares Elizabeth, saying that she that she hates killing. This will get back later. She hates Booker for what he's been what he's done. But the thing is that Booker's always been like this. When since he's been in the P Pinkertons, it's affected his life forever. But it does say that he will protect Elizabeth in order to get her to New York, or basically protect her. But, but she does patch up his hand for what happened. But don't worry, we're going to learn a lot more about these two characters. Especially Booker. So, let's get to it then. They get, in order to get the airship working, they need, need to start the generator, but they need Shock Jockey in order to power it. They get Shock Jockey at the Hall of Heroes, but it's been invaded by Slate, an old friend of... An old friend of Booker who fought with the Pinkertons with him. They get to Slate and basically manage to get the shot jockey, but after they have to kill Slate, he says this to them. They haven't changed you, Booker. Not one bit. It's almost fitting that Booker looks away at the violence this time. Interesting. Elizabeth and Booker make it to the airship, and, and basically Booker starts putting the quarterings to New York, but Elizabeth still thinks she's going to Paris. 
But when she discovers that he's going to New York, she's mad at him for it. He technically could have said that, like, they could probably take you to New York if he gives them to them. But I don't really know why. She's angry. She's angry at him, but basically he has to, he has to tell that he ha the only way he can get paid is if he takes her there. She starts crying, and this is what bites him back in the ass for lying. Come on, Eddie. Everything's gonna be okay. Will you just turn around and talk to me, and we can- Booker meets up with Daisy Fitzroy, a character that doesn't really serve a humongous part of the plot, except for one major part of the character. That basically affects another character, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, so Booker catches up with Elizabeth and they go to Chen Lin because Daisy sent them there. Dangerous. But he's no dead and basically they go to a different timeline in order to get the guns from him. But they also go to another timeline where, turns out, no, Booker, no, Booker and no, Slade burned down the Hall of Heroes are now seeing as heroes by the world's populi. This is also leading to another nosebleed by Booker. First of all, tries to, tries to kill Fink's, Fink's son, but basically Elizabeth kills her. Elizabeth's first kill. This leaves her horrified and Booker tries to calm her down and basically comfort her in this situation. But she just runs off into the airship. Elizabeth locks herself in the room and Booker tries to check on her. I know how this feels. Booker tries to comfort Elizabeth in this situation, which is really interesting due to all the murder that he's done. But when she comes out, she's got brand new clothes. And she mentions to Booker something really interesting here. How do you do it? How do I do what? Forget. How do you wash away the things that you've done? You don't. You just learn to live with it. This is basically just showing that Booker still feels bad for the things that he's done, but he feels even more bad for Elizabeth. But anyways, then the songbird attacks the thing and basically it crashes. Then basically the songbird catches up, up to them and basically flings from Booker through a, through a building. He tries to kill Booker, but Elizabeth stops him, and then basically Elizabeth is, decides to talk to the songbird, and then she is taken away. Quite sad scene. She, he makes it to the complex town, and basically an old an early Elizabeth transports him to the future and gets him to know how to sort the songbird. Like and basically, he gets transported back and saves Elizabeth. Apparently other times, basically, okay, he did not okay. save because okay. he was stopped by the songbird. But basically, he just, wants, he just wants to get shown to this, but Elizabeth wants to kill Comstock. And then this line comes along. That. And so what, you're going to kill him? This is where you start moralizing, Booker. You forget. I know you. I'm not going to let you kill him. Really? Booker? What are you going to do to stop me? Not a damn thing. Because I'm going to do it for you. Who is in control? Booker and Elizabeth make it to Comstock's house and basically they find Comstock. Booker kills Comstock as he's telling lies to Elizabeth. So basically Comstock is dead. Elizabeth destroys the tower with the songbird's help and basically she's now got all of her powers. Then she transports all of them to, to Rapture. The songbird dies underwater due to the pressure effect getting into the machinery. The songbird dies and Elizabeth calms it down as, it's drown as it drowns. They get up to the top of the surface and basically just... She discover that there are tons of lighthouses, doors, different universes doors, from the tears that Elizabeth can open up. And uh, this is where a lot of, this is where the story gets back together for circle. They end up back at Booker's office, and basically it turns out that Elizabeth is Anna, the daughter that he sold when he was when he was when he was in gambling debt. And the person that he actually sold it to was Comstock, aka no. himself. No, the only reason Elizabeth has got powers is because when she was separated, the pinky was separated. Her pinky, so yeah. Comstock is technically right with that. But basically, they make it. They're going to say that he's going to kill Comstock, but then this scene happens. Okay. Are you sure this is what you want? I have to. It's the only way to undo what I've done to you. With that showing that he's dedicated to taking care of his daughter, he gets transported back to the baptism space. And it turns out that they're all the Elizabeths from different timelines appear. As they're as basically they explain that the only way to stop comes out and end the circle of pain and misery is to basically kill Booker. So Comstock is never made from a baptism, it never becomes religious, and Columbia is never made. I still don't like this ending, but it is it is kind of fitting, as basically he does still technically save his daughter, but we don't really fully get fully get the answers, especially with the post credit scene. 
Now, let's get into the interesting part since we've gone through the story. Booker DeWitt is one of my most, is an interesting character to me. And plus, I actually believe it to be Troy Baker's most underrated role. It's not really as appreciated as well as his other work. But this is a really good character. There's so much depth to him and basically with his past. The fact that he has a bit, the, the goal is something that would kind of be a staple of Troy's career. Also for Troy Baker, I think he's a really, really good actor. He did, I have heard some criticism of his work, but still, he's pretty good. But the other roles that I have seen him in, like Joe from The Last of Us and Joker, hell, even from the Far Cry games, I have to admit he's a really good actor. But I love this role. I love this role because I consider it to be my favourite from him. He plays his character really, really well. Also, another thing that made me like this character before I, before I knew Booker was that I played Resident Evil, the new ones, and I got into Ethan Winters a lot, so revisioning that at first was something that helped me appreciate the game a little bit more until I found out Booker. But yeah, I like Booker's goal, and basically, I did want to see them get to Paris, but I'll explain more about that in the next video, which is going to cover Elizabeth's character. So yeah, this is a part one of two.